Okay, hello everyone again. At this time I have muted the lines and we are recording the session now. Uh, glad to have you here for another BDPA Tech and Career Talk. We're excited to have Natty Abib with us from AWS. This morning discussing AWS Cloud and Careers with Amazon Web Services. Uh, I am Devin Jenkins, a Senior Technical Product Manager at GE Healthcare in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm the leader for our BDPA Tech and Career Talks. So glad to have you all. Uh, for those who may not be aware, BDPA, Black Data Processing Associates, has been around since 1975. Uh, it's an organization that teaches young people computer programming skills at the middle and high school level. Uh, it also serves as a forum for IT professionals looking to develop a network and advance their careers in the industry. Uh, so glad to have you all a part of this. Definitely um, encourage you all to continue to support BDPA. Um, and be on the lookout as we share more details around the Tech and Career Talks for next year. Um, as I transition towards our speaker, uh, Natty, I'm going to go ahead and give you the presenter rights while I get your bio up. Okay, you should have that request coming over now. Just a little bit about Natty, and I'll let him go into more detail, but he is a cloud infrastructure architect in the AWS Professional Services Organization. Um, in his role, he helps customers adopt AWS services as well as acquire new skills, learn best practices, and succeed globally with the power of Amazon Web Services. He is passionate and bullish on Africa's tech ecosystem and is found mentoring and investing in startups in the region when he isn't building on AWS. Uh, that's a brief intro of Natty. I'll let him tell you anything else he would like you to know. Um, and at this time, you have the floor. All right. Good morning. Did you hear me? Yep, we hear you, we see you, and we see your presentation. You're good to go. Awesome. Three, three for one. All right. Um, first off, just want to say thank you to Devin for uh, reaching out and the BDPA fam for uh, having me here today to share my experience and talk about uh, you know, the amazing work that we do uh, at AWS. Um, really excited to be here. And let me figure out this. All right. So yeah, my, my goal today is really to provide uh, some context for you all in terms of what AWS is and what is really the value that customers are seeing um, as they're adopting to the cloud. Um, so that might be a little more on the salesy side. Uh, but then uh, later on, I also just want to share my path on <clears throat> how I got into AWS, uh, what I do, uh, followed up with some uh, resources and tips if uh, any of you are interested either at um, achieving your AWS certifications, uh, considering going to the cloud role, um, or just le learning more about uh, interviewing at Amazon or AWS overall. Um, so yeah, and, and then leave uh, plenty of time at the end for Q&A, so that way um, I'm able to hear your thoughts and pro try to provide some answers for your questions. Um, and I just wanted to point out that uh, throughout this presentation, I'll be sharing my personal opinions on thoughts on a lot of these uh, topics. Um, so take that. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's get to it. So with um, AWS, I think I'm pretty sure uh, at some point you've heard of AWS and cloud but either you're in the role, in a technical role, uh, or you're not. So just to set the uh, level field, you know, AWS is the most comprehensive and broadly adopted like a cloud platform uh, with offering over, at this point, like 175 um, fully featured um, services, you know, around the data centers globally. Um, and then there are millions of customers that, you know, range from the small, uh, fast-growing startups to large enterprise customers to also 
um, government agencies that are building on AWS um, because you know they're seeing a lot of values in lower costs, um, increased agility and innovation um, faster. Um, so let's look at you know why why did these companies even care and what is really the value on cloud and you know AWS in general, right? Um, so I think in the past couple of years, startups are um, really changing the way businesses are opening, uh, operating, sorry. And it's really important for any enterprise customer um, to be more competitive and really want, and we are seeing that customers want to move fast, continue to innovate, and they really want a platform that allows them to expand and grow at the scale that they are looking to grow. You know, the number one the value that uh, customers get by adopting cloud is they get an opportunity to focus on their business and, you know, their core competency and then not really worry about the underlying the infrastructure piece for it. Um, and then customers nowadays want more for less, right? They, in this case, there would be enterprise customers that are really interested in building new tools, improving their customers' experience um, while spending the least amount of money. Um, and then let's the um, reliability and the scalability aspect in terms of, um, let, me, let me give you a scenario here. Let's say you're a large enterprise that's currently operating on-prem in your own data center, and you have, you know, a Christmas Day sale that's coming up because that time's coming up. And to really scale, or if you know that you're having a lot of demand at that time, so and you're on-prem, your options are you got to pre-order your servers, make sure you have the capacity for that specific day. Um, then you have to do all your efforts and configuring it and making sure your infrastructure is ready for that single day. And then all goes well, uh, and you've hopefully planned and estimated the right amount of capacity that you need for that uh, Christmas day, because if you didn't, then you would have needed to get more. Uh, you, you, customers wouldn't be able to um, get your services. Um, so yeah, that, that's, and then throughout that time, if, you know, for the Christmas day or that sale day, you are able to really satisfy your customers, but then after that, as you're, you might not be getting as much traffic to your sites, then you have a lot of um, capacity that is not going to be wasted. Um, so that, that's one of the, the, you know, the values in terms of the, the scalability and the reliability of it as well. And I mean, if you're a startup nowadays, it's just so simple for you to try something. If it doesn't work, uh, just end it right there without uh, a lot of investment in your infrastructure and the, the security aspects. And ac across the board, one of the important values here is you know, security, right? Um, if you're trusting your workloads to go to the cloud, you know, security is a very important for you. Um, and for your customers that you serve as well. So that's uh, something that uh, we internally call at Amazon security is day zero, right? That's to emphasize on, you know, the, the priority and the level of effort that we've put in for ensuring the, the security of our infrastructure. Um, and then this, um, and I apologize, it's kind of a loaded slide and too much going on, but I just wanted to give you a little perspective on, you know, the different um, services that AWS offers, uh, because sometimes I talk to customers and a lot of people think, you know, cloud and AWS is a bunch of uh, elastic compute storage or just servers, right? But, you know, th this AWS offers like a breadth of services and over 175 uh, 
services for you know a wide range of technology industries and use cases um, and then it's not only the breadth but also looking at the depth of the functionality of each of those services um, for example in here you, if you look at the database um, services you know AWS offers the widest range of uh, multiple purpose-built uh, databases so that you you know that are suitable for your different applications and uh, yeah so this kind of gives you depending on the, the team that you have locally uh, their conference level for if it's you know there you have experts machine learning and AI, AI ML people in your team then you could go with a conf configuration or service that um, is a lot more customizable and flexible but if you just have a few developers that want to go in and try machine learning with just uh, a few clicks then you have services that are very simple and easy for um, developers that don't technically have a lot of the uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence background so there's something in the breadth um, and depth of the services for everyone um, and one other cool slide that I like to see is uh, you know the distribution of the, the data centers uh, around the globe right uh, so right right now we have about 77 availability zones um, I'll get to what uh, the availability zones are uh, spread out through 24 uh, geographic regions and you know there's always more regions opening up I, I can't I can't remember where it was but um, a few weeks ago there's a new region that just opened up as well uh, so yeah you know this is continuing to grow and you know this allows customers to you know you could be sitting here in California and deploying your application to your customers uh, in Europe so they don't have the latency or there's any form of compliance that uh, you need to meet for your customers um, and then in terms of availability zone you know this um, an availability zone consists of one or more um, discrete data centers and each of them have their redundant like power and networking connectivity and in-house separation so that's um, done for like failovers and, and stuff um, so yeah, and I, I think this um, this is the most sales kind of uh, pitch that uh, I've I've done. Um, but I, you know, I really wanted to give you and excite you about like the different um, services as well as the different value that customers are seeing uh, through AWS. So that way, you have a little bit more insight as we're moving to the career aspect. Um, and yeah, like I think. You know, technology is cool and all, but you know, if we can't use it to solve real life problems, then it just becomes, it's just, or, an, or it's just uh, a nice tool to have. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, one of the recent examples that I just pulled up. Um, picked it for two reasons. UCSD is 10 minutes from where I am, and you know, it's something that's relevant for with uh, COVID going on. Uh, so th this is where you know UCSD worked AWS uh, on using CT scans to analyze you know the and come up with a machine learning algorithm on detecting uh, COVID-19. So and the thing here that you know continues to fascinate me is that the ability to do this within 10 days from planning this out with the team and then really deploying it in a scalable infrastructure within 10 days um, where they had to they had opportunity to put those x-rays into the EC2 which is an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instances and then use machine learning algorithms to analyze them and apply a, a heat map over them um, and then end-to-end -end, I think it, 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 it took about five days to implement this Clinic, real clinical workflow connected with uh, real clinical pictures. So I think this is um, a cool example 
of um, what customers are able to do um, in, within a short period of time. All right, so that, that wraps up my uh, spiel on AWS and um, cloud. Um, and then right now, hopefully, I've gotten you a little bit more excited about cloud and AWS. So well, let's move on to the career aspect of it. And I'd just like to start off by sharing <coughs> my career path on uh, my, uh, and then what I, what I am doing right now also. Um, well, as many of you have guessed, I um, did not wake up and decided that uh, cloud is, you know, what I wanted to do and work on infrastructure. Um, I really started my tech career on in help desk. I worked as uh, a sysadmin while I was back in school, um, and then I was studying computer science there. So when I was, you know, during on campus, I used to work as a sysadmin, um, working on different like servers, configuration, uh, Microsoft IIS and stuff. And then right after graduation, um, you know, I did computer science, so I felt like I needed a development job. Uh, I don't know, because all my friends were getting them. Um, so I tried that path um, for a few years, worked as a software engineer, um, mostly working for uh, DOD. Um, and then, since I had a little bit more background on the sysadmin, the networking, um, and infrastructure, um, I tend to pick up a lot of the, hey, could you deploy the server? Could you configure this from our development team? Um, and then I actually learned that there was actually a term for this on combining both the development and operations called DevOps. Um, so that was the uh, next path that I took and got got an opportunity to learn, build, you know, CI C D pipelines, containers, and really get into the DevOps field. Um, and then throughout working in the DevOps and really working with customers, um, the customers would be more developers and sysadmins and kind of merging those two. Then I transitioned over to cloud, um, figured out what they were, try to you know, took my sysadmin and like my experience with like networking, uh, servers, and then translated those skills to the cloud. And, and really that's how I started. And then, you know, until this day, I continue to learn and uh, try to get better, get more and more of the certs, trying to adopt more of those 175 services because, but be honest, I do not know all of them. And, you know, there's, there's an opportunity for me to um, get better. Um, and then right now, um, I work with uh, AWS professional services team, um, and then our team really works on assisting through a collection of offerings which help uh, customers achieve very specific uh, customer-related enterprise cloud adoptions. Uh, so in terms of I guess one or two things that um, that really excites me regarding what I do at AWS is, you know, we're a company of builders, right? Uh, Amazon is filled with very smart, um, passionate people who are always building new products, services, and innovating it every day, right? So, you know, just being in that atmosphere to learn from people, interact, uh, I think that's really exciting for me. Um, and then also the ability that I get ownership on a lot of the things that I do um, from, you know, taking lead on the project or, you know, proposing some ideas and really taking them to customers. Um, I think that's a lot, the top two things I would uh, say I enjoy the most. Um, so in a little bit, broader sense, you know, what, what is it like to work uh, at Amazon, what is, or what is the culture like? Um, I just picked a few, um, I don't think I'll have time to go into each of them in detail, but uh, if I was to pick the top three or two, I'd say number one, like the leadership principles, um, you know, these are four, 14 leadership principles, we call them LP, if you've ever 
um, interviewed with AWS or Amazon, um, you know, everybody really talks about them and, you know, they're really the, the guiding principles that the entire company operates on. Uh, and then some of the, my favorite one from there could be, um, you know, learn and be curious, uh, continues to earn trust, in, invent and simplify, uh, and think big. Um, so, and then the other one is, you know, at Amazon, it's always day one. It, when, what does that really mean? It, it means, you know, our, our approach remains as if it's a co Amazon's first day, you know. So it, it just really shows it's always innovating and staying on top of what's going on uh, around. And um, the last one I wanted to highlight was, you know, around the obsession with customers. Um, I think if you've heard uh, Jeff Bezos or Andy Jassy speak at any of the events, you'd hear, you know, the customer obsession come up a lot. And, you know, that, that is something that we really hold um, true to our hearts um, in any of the situations um, that we engage with, uh, with our customers. Um, very interestingly, um, a few weeks ago, I had one customer that wanted feedback on our professional services team, and we kind of, we arranged a meeting for him to talk to another customer from that we've worked with before, and one of the advice that um, or feedback that the customer gave was our AWS professional services team is, you know, we, we listen to our customers, we understand, but when we disagree and when we think we're, they're not doing the right thing, we don't just say yes just to make them happy, but we tell them, um, you know, the honest and data-proved data um, evidence that there is. And, you know, that really stuck to that customer and he said, um, that was something that really he valued and, you know, the honesty and uh, the, the transparency is uh, something that they, they valued. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, customer obsession um, is a key part in, um, across Amazon. Um, all right, so now hopefully we talked about uh, cloud and what it's the culture is like uh, working at Amazon. Um, and then if I've done something right, uh, you're probably maybe curious about a few of the career uh, opportunities at AWS or Amazon. Um, and sometimes uh, it's not really clear on the different categories. Uh, for those of you that uh, are industry experts, then I'm pretty sure you're, you're well familiar with the dis different titles. But uh, so I work in the professional services team, um, and my team really goes in uh, hands-on and works with customers, helps them in configuring, uh, building their infrastructure, and really uh, training their team as well on the spot. Um, and then we have the solution architect. This are uh, really responsible for um, d designing a solution with customers um, and you know understanding their use case and delivering something. Um, that, that is impactful for them. Um, and, sorry about that. All right. Um, sorry about that. So the, one of the difference between the solution architect role and the professional services role is, you know, you know, the, the professional services provides hands-on keyboard support to our customers while uh, our solution uh, architect roles do not. Um, and then we have the software development engineers that, you know, work very hard to continue to build all their services and add the features and continue to develop the, the different services um, on the AWS platform. So these are more on the SDE uh, roles, uh, and then the support engineers who 
you know, are always in the front line assisting the customers, you know, when they have um, any mission critical applications that they want to host or they have any issues running um, <clears throat> on AWS. Um, so these are just the um, top four that I picked out that, you know, I'm a little bit more familiar with, but on, if you go to um, Amazon's career page, there, there is a lot more uh, positions, uh, both that are in the technical field as well as uh, non-technical field as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of like uh, project management, um, sales, business development, and all those roles. Um, so I do encourage you to check them out. And if anybody um, is interested for like student students or uh, early in career talent, there are those as well. Um, the Tech U program is an amazing program. Uh, for recent graduates um, and people looking to transition into um, AWS. Um, so a few of the tips that I have in the regarding um, if you are ever interested in um, interviewing with AWS or Amazon, um, you know, the number one thing I would really recommend is, you know, the leadership principles, they're important, right? Um, you will hear a lot of emphasis on Amazon's leadership principles, so I really recommend going through all the leadership principles, understand them, and then think about a few examples of where you demonstrate those principles throughout your career. Um, and then when you're responding to these interviews, you know, follow the star, situation, task, action, and results, right? Um, and then not always are the results positive. Uh, sometimes, you know, you, you could fail on a project, but uh, it's just understanding that the reason the failure um, and then learning from, from that. Uh, most of the successful programs have risen from the ashes from a failed project, right? So it's really encouraged to have specific examples of the time you've taken risk, failed, made mistakes, and then uh, learn from those, because that's really important in any far form of uh, innovation. Um, I put I ask smart questions. Um, you know, there you could ask about um, any questions about the roles and just some specifics on people's experience. Um, but really, something that um, turns me off when people ask is. Um, do you have any jobs at Amazon? Uh, you, you know, yes, we do, and you know, the, the website provides a lot of information on the job opportunities that there are. Um, so you really want to look out and make sure you're not asking questions that um, aren't easy, that are already available to you online, and you could get the answers to uh, easily. Uh, but you know, as questions around like the day-to-day, -day, what is it like in a professional services role? Um, what are the areas that you're looking for? You know, some things that are more concrete and sh that show that you've done your research um, and, you know, you're showing interest. I think those would be amazing questions uh, there. And then I, I, maintaining relationships, I think we're all professionals here that, um, you know, relationships at the end of the day are really valuable in our industry in terms of, if you're looking to change careers down the line um, or really just network and you're trying to recruit people to work on your next startup, right? Um, so that's, I think, very valuable. And just uh, the last one, I put honesty. Um, you know, when, when I do a lot of interviews, it, it, it shows if you know what you're talking about or if you don't. Um, so we're more, uh, at least I'm more comfortable when you know, I'm talking to a candidate and they say, um, you know, I'm not comfortable with this topic or this technology, let's move on. And, you know, it, it's really simple to just move on and find the next, um, uh, the next topic that you're really interested in and passionate about. Um, yeah, and uh, I always tell candidates that I work, uh, talk to in terms of, you know, you've done the hard work on bringing your career to this stage and just stay confident and um, excited and continues to just share that experience during any of these uh, interviews. Um, and then along the 
the lines of tips. I think um, AWS getting your certification will be um, a great uh, tool uh, if you're, you know, really interested in trying out cloud uh, or, you know, pursuing a, a specific uh, domain as well. Uh, I really recommend, uh, you know, starting off with the cloud practitioner exam that, that is on the bottom, um, you know, especially if you're new to AWS or cloud. Uh, but if you have some years of experience, then I would say jump right into the associate level trainings. Um, I'd say the, the architect roles um, or that pad that called the first column uh, show is really more on the breadth uh, on the different services. It gives you a pretty good understanding of the overall picture of different services that you can really specialize on, you know, if you're a developer on the associate developer exam, um, and if you're in the sysadmin, focus on the sysops uh, exam. Um, and then with after like one or two of the associate level certs, moving over to your professional uh, level cert certifications, or if you know you want to specialize in one specific field and could be in networking or security, uh, taking any of the specialty certifications on the right. Um, my general um, advice regarding you know the certifications is hands-on experience is really important, um, like really important because uh, you know there, there's just so much that you could learn from online uh, reading and uh, watching YouTube videos, but uh, you need a little bit more hands-on experience on trying to go in there, configuring it, and try, trying them out. Um, I'll, I'll talk in the next slide about a, a program that, that could help you get this, but even if you're not a student or affiliated with a um, university, uh, you know, you could always spin up your own AWS account provision, play around with whatever you need, and then when you're done, make sure you close them uh, or terminate those instances so that way you're not uh, paying extra. Uh, great learning resources that I use every time, uh, A Cloud Guru um, and Cloud Academy, I actually think uh, they merged into one, so they have a tremendous amount of um, online videos, courses, so I really encourage you to uh, go through them. Um, and some of them are like cloud certification specific, but others, you know, they're um, on different technologies per se. Um, and then if you're looking for practice exams, WizLab um, is something that I, I, I like to do. Um, usually one earlier in the, before I start studying just to understand where my weaknesses are. Um, and then right before um, taking the exam. All right, I feel like I'm cruising through this, but bear with me. Um, and then lastly, I just want to leave you with some of the resources, or, you know, overall. Um, on the right side, like that's AWS reInvent, that's a huge event for Amazon and AWS, uh, usually, it was in uh, Vegas. Uh, I don't know how many of you had had the opportunity to attend, um, but this year it's you know free and online. I think that's really amazing. Uh, so I really encourage you if you have the opportunity to sign up, attend a few of the sessions. Um, you know you'll hear a lot on new services, lounge, um, as well as some um, hands-on demos, labs. Uh, and then you also get a, an opportunity to network with a, a lot of individuals um, and experts in the field. Um, AWS Activate is for if you're looking at um, tools and credits, and if you have a startup, that's an amazing tool. You get credits, business support, uh, and some curated list of um, uh, tools and services for your startup. Um, AWS Educate is if you're in a university uh, or a student, it, it's a great platform to provide you uh, free resources, learning opportunity, as well as like uh, guiding you in terms of uh, the career paths um, and laying out a map for you as well. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think they also have um, AWS um, accounts 
that you could provision and play around and test with uh, with AWS Educate, but not entirely sure, so don't hold me to that. Um, all right, yeah, uh, with that being said, um, I am done. Um, thank you so much for your, your time. I feel like I went pretty fast through everything, uh, but I really wanted to skip over to the question and answer, so I'm, there, uh, so I'm answering really your questions uh, and getting your thoughts. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nettie. Uh, this time I'm going to unmute the lines. Uh, when I do this, I ask that you would mute yourself if you don't wish to speak. And Takia, I see you had a question in the chat, so I'll let you go first. Hi. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Nati, for this very thorough presentation. Um, my question was, but I think it, it was answered, um, was basically which AWS certs do you recommend? Because um, I am an IT project manager, and I do want to learn more about AWS. Um, I have a background in um, DevOps, product, agile, Scrum, and data analytics. And I, want, well, I, and I, and I am interested in adding AWS to my skill set um, as a project manager. Um, so that it can increase my marketability, and uh, I'm also in the process of launching my own consultancy business. Okay, sure, yeah. Um, so the question is around um, the certification for uh, somebody that's more in the project management role. Um, so yeah, one that I would really recommend is the cloud practitioner um, that is um, super, um, uh, friendly if, if you don't have too much of the technical background, you know, it, it really helps you understand the value that it brings and understands uh, how you're able to organize the projects bet better in the different categories and uh, think about it. Um, and then once you're done with that, I'll really recommend at least getting the associate um, certification uh, solution architect uh, that has a little bit more um, technical depth, uh, but it also provides you a holistic uh, set of services. So as you mentioned, like if you're interested in your building your own company, you would want to know a little bit uh, of the breadth. Okay, thank you so much. Pleasure. All right, other questions out there? Hi, this is John Coleman, Chicago Chapter. I want to first start off saying thank you for such a great presentation on a topic that has had a lot of interest in my local chapter in, my, in Chicago. Um, but the question I want to ask you is around supporting um, others in the chapter. As how, how and what do you think are the best methods to mentor uh, talent to move into the AWS space? Sure, sure. Um, so question around the, the talent and how um, I think you could um, really provide more of the, the mentorship for uh, folks. Um, so I think, um, you know, um, the, the, there is definitely connections from the Black Employee Network within Amazon. Um, established relationship with uh, BDPA and other um, uh, chapters like, you know, Afrotech, you know, Amazon is a, a sponsor for that, and we have people um, around uh, supporting different people in uh, the Afrotech and a lot of those conferences. So I think uh, networking of those conferences. Um, and then, uh, you know, reaching out to any of the folks internally at AWS or Amazon um, and really getting, um, you know, a collaboration between on events or anything uh, that you're really interested in. Interested in. Well, I, I, I would extend, please feel free to connect with me. I'm John Coleman. I'm the president of the Chicago chapter. I would love to be a conduit and part of the expansion of POC talent into the AWS space 
and anything I can do to be supportive, allow me to do that. And if you want to connect me to any of resources in the Chicago metro area, that would be great. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, I'll connect you with some of the recruiters that we have, and you know, they they will know more of the programs that are happening and going on. So, yep, I'll uh, reach out. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <clears throat> okay, the ones here. I think I see your hand raised. Yeah. Uh, how are you doing there, Abe? I uh, sent you uh, an email. I was putting together why you were giving us your. Um, in presentation, uh, I'm a developer. I'm a developer, I do full stack, you know, work. Question: I want, And I've completed a an AWS graduate course of this past spring. Uh, I'm getting a fellowship to do my master's PhD, and I would like to incorporate AWS uh, in my research. Uh, question: I want to ask you is what certification do you recommend for developers? Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I think for um, the developer, I would really recommend you look at the um, associate developer certification. Um, that, that really focuses on a lot of the development tools uh, you know, the deployment of you know CI/CD pipelines, um, and also on some of the technologies that you could use to build. Um, you know, by build, like I'm talking more in the development aspect of it uh, for AWS. Um, so I'd definitely start off with the developer um, exam, um, and then maybe transition over to the solution architect um, exam, uh, the associate one. I I know when I took the course in MWS, there was the Lambda component, and as you well know, that uh, utility uh, with the Amazon platform um, supports development in a variety of different languages in addition to AWS's uh, customized uh, software development language. Um, that direction that I... Uh, was really more focused uh, in in trying to learn the development or development component of the thing that in the associate uh, certification I uh, will visit uh, that type of technology or can I see that at the architect level? Um, so if you're if you're uh, with um, so AWS Lambda, that, that's our serverless technology where you have the opportunity to code in any of the language that you you prefer um, and really deploy your code in AWS. Um, so if you're really looking at um, hands-on development uh, type of, uh, you know, training or certifications, yeah, I think it's more on the developer uh, certification. Um, the architect uh, exam is looking more on a higher level, you know, uh, hard things deployed on for high availability, redundancy, uh, and then making sure you, you understand like the basis around like the networking, the compute, and the storage. Um, so yeah, I think uh, if you're really interested in the developer uh, development space, check that out, um, and then, you know, outside of um, the certification tool, you know, there's the Amplify platform developer toolkit. Um, so I Amplify, AppSync, there are different services around there that you could go in there and play around and get more hands-on development experience as well. Okay, yeah, that gives me a little bit more insight, uh, which you just mentioned. As you well know, architect uh, certification level uh, helps to manage uh, that myriad of uh, services that I think you showed us in uh, maybe your first um, uh, slide. Um, however, um, with the development, uh, you're saying that there are specific services, again, in addition to uh, 
of that can be explored to to do development on that platform. Is that correct? Yep. You you are breaking up at the at the middle. But if I understand your question, um, you know, you're asking if those services are more specific to building um, different tools and development. Uh, and yes, right, they are frameworks that um, you could use to start uh, writing your, you know, Hello World application and deploying it to AWS from your command. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, because I, I have, as you all know, out in the world in companies, we use portals uh, that are in the cloud uh, to perform out of our development. Okay, then. Well, uh, thanks for my my questions, and if I have anything further to uh, say, uh, I'll reach out to you an email, and, and again, I did send one uh, to you during uh, this presentation. Okay, have a pleasant and nice day. All right, thank you. You too. Yeah, can I have, can, I, can you guys hear me? Is this, hello? Yes, yeah, we hear you. Yeah, all right, this is Kareem Grover from the Memphis chapter. Uh, excellent, present, um, excellent, excellent presentation. So, um, I'm a I'm a developer that uses a lot of AWS technology, and um, I just I, I just wanted to know uh, is what you, you you know you mentioned AWS being a very big platform and a lot of people are using AWS right, but do you know any notable companies other than Amazon that's using AWS and like do you ever see these big companies ever like uh, reach out to Amazon asking for AWS? Like contracting AWS developers from Amazon, like you know, like how big is this? You know, how big is this market? Right. Yeah. So, um, Kareem, if I understand your question, you are asking um, if other companies besides Amazon are using AWS. Is that, is that correct? Uh, or no. No, I'm just I'm just asking, you know, um, you know, are there big customers using AWS? Are, I mean, you know, and how are they using them? I was like, uh, I know there's like a tons of different software. You know, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. So let me actually give you. Um, I mean, in short, yes, there are, you know there are millions of customers uh, using AWS right uh, today, um, and they range from large enterprise customers such as Amazon.com. Um, and you know Capital One, okay, um, and a lot, right? Um, and then so these are the larger enterprise ones. And then also when you're looking at the startup space, you know we, you have uh, Airbnb, Lyft, uh, you know. So it, it's a broad set of customers, and really depends on uh, you know the type of industry that you're looking for. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a breadth. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different um, companies across the board that continue to use uh, AWS. Um, and yeah, I think um, yeah. And it, and the website, you know, there's uh, on the AWS site, it it really breaks down the different customers on the specific industries that you're interested in looking at, uh, because I think as you know, you're trying to build something, you want to kind of get an idea on what others are doing in that industry uh, and picking out the right technology and how they're using AWS for their specific use case. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thanks. Uh, it obviously, you know, great, great response. And uh, I'll look into it some more. I just know that uh, AWS is the talk of the town here recently. Sure is. Yeah. Any other questions out there? Hi, this is Takiya Ellis again. I have a quick question. Um, I've been looking at AWS for a couple of months now as to what kind of opportunities are available for a project manager. And I don't really see project management opportunities in AWS. Are they classified as another role by any chance? Um. Project management roles. No, I think uh, you know project management or program management will be the way um, they would label them. 
um, you know, if you're looking more on the customer facing um, side on, you know, the AWS side, uh, you know, where you're interacting with customers and while you're managing the project, especially like the professional service engagements, um, those will be uh, engagement managers. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, the other teams definitely, like uh, the SDE teams do have their um, software managers, um, technical program managers as well, TPM. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, any more questions out there? Any more questions? I'll drop um, my... Uh, okay. John, did you have something? I was. I didn't think I thought that we had dead air space, so I was going to ask one more question yeah, around the idea. Um, so Chicago chapter, I asked about mentorship of... Um, individuals into AWS, um, are there also pathways that you can recommend for those who are transitioning from, and much like the last, uh, last two speakers have talked about, migrating from existing technologies into making those fit in AWS uh, world, what are the best uh, ways to do that? Um, John, I I didn't understand uh, your question. Could you maybe? Um... Okay. Um, so uh, we've talked about those who are coming uh, new into the market segment and how they can get uh, start with AWS credentials and use the various tools. For those who are going from other parts of the technology community, what can they do to leverage what they already are doing to be uh, successful in AWS? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, and this is a question that I that comes up a lot, and I tell folks, especially around like interviews and mentorship, is um, you know the fundamentals of the IT um, and you know the system, the networking, the compute, and all those things don't change because uh, you're on the cloud or you're using AWS, right? Um, the same uh, networking CIDR ranges, uh, the same you know, the configurations on Windows, those will still uh, be there. Uh, the only difference here is, you know, you're learning on the different um, AWS terminologies, uh, but having that background, you know, you're, you're strong uh, across the, you know, what databases are, the different types of database, the networking, all those skills could transition over um, to when you're working on any cloud-specific projects, and they are actually very valuable um, as you're doing it. And that's um, something that my team actually looks for uh, when we hire candidates as well. Um, some things that might change are around um, more on the mentality and the model of it. Uh, you know, if you're very familiar with uh, a traditional data center, now you're starting to look at your infrastructure more on a pay-as-you-go model, um, agility, uh, DevOps. So just those kind of things are the those those are the things that would change. Uh, but I think the core uh, IT um, you know technical domains will still be there and very relevant. Uh, same thing Perfect. is true Thank if you. you're a developer as well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and finally. Um, for those of us who were not able to see the presentation, I'm on my mobile, for example, will the slides that you're presenting be available offline as well? Yep, so I, I can take that one. So the, the presentation will be recorded and available on our website, which is bdpa.org backslash bdpa career tech talks, or bdpa tech career talks, um, along with I, all the other recordings from previous sessions. Yeah, I was throwing that out there to you for free advertising. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, we are at time. Uh, thank you to everyone for your questions. Natty, thank you for sharing with us today. Uh, Natty did drop his LinkedIn link in the chat. 
It is also on the screen on the slide here, along with some AWS links for careers, AWS in general, and the reInvent conference that is coming up in a few weeks. Uh, so be sure to check all that out. Connect with Natty on LinkedIn. He's an approachable guy. Won't hurt you. Uh, so thank you for sharing with us today. Any last comments from you before we wrap? Um, no, I just want to say thank you again for you for inviting me and all the questions here. It was really exciting uh, chatting and talking to everybody here. Um, I really look forward to connecting with you on LinkedIn. Um, and, you know, if you have any questions, try to reach out. Um, and then, you know, most of the time I might not have uh, the answer to all your questions, but I'll, I'll try my best to direct, at least direct you in the right direction uh, and connect you with folks. Um, and I just wish you all the best in uh, your career and like if you're studying for any of the AWS certifications as well. Uh, good luck. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we will see you all again in a few weeks. All right. Have a happy Thanksgiving. All right. Happy too. Thanksgiving. All right. Is that? Yeah.